Welcome to this uh, lecture number 19 uh, of the course Computational Hydraulics. Uh, we are in module 2 uh, Numerical Methods and uh, in this particular lecture class I will be covering uh, unit 15 and this is the last lecture class for finite volume method and uh, we will be discussing high resolution methods. Uh, learning objective uh, for this particular unit, uh, at the end of this unit students will be able to discretize conservation laws using high resolution methods. Uh, this is our well known governing equation that we have utilized for our uh, earlier lecture classes. Uh, phi is uh, again general variable here and in one dimension uh, we have only x t representation. Uh, f is uh, our flux function. Uh, we can have different representations for this flux function and S phi is our sourcing term. Uh, so, this is our one dimensional conservation law. Now, let us see uh, that with high resolution methods uh, we will be utilizing the concept of uh, piecewise reconstruction. Let us say that uh, we have our general uh, cell where uh, in one dimension we have central cell as P, uh, east cell is I plus 1 and west cell uh, let us say this is W cell. Now, with this if we start, now we can have this east and west phase for this one. Let us say that cell average value phi p uh, can be used uh, to construct this phi n tilde and this one is x t n which is dependent on x and t n that is present time level value. So, here x is variable we have phi n value and this sigma p n which is calculated at the present time step for cell P we will be utilizing this thing and we have this difference x, x is arbitrary any distance and x p is uh, our coordinate for this p h cell. So, in one dimension uh, we have represented this phi tilde x T n in terms of uh, cell centered value uh, some uh, difference uh, which is with respect to our uh, cell center value uh, of the coordinate and sigma uh, P n is another coefficient. Let us see what is this coefficient. And this is valid uh, obviously for this range x w and x e that means within p cell only this approximation is valid. This is obviously a linear approximation. Now, uh, let us consider our simplified uh, flux term where a phi uh, is the flux function and A is constant, phi is our again general variable. With this 
if we proceed uh, solution for future time level that is tilde x t n plus 1 can be represented in terms of tilde x a minus a t provided that a is positive. So, we can get uh, the future time level value uh, for a particular cell based on the previous time level value uh, at any arbitrary location x t n plus 1. Uh, now, with this uh, we can calculate our numerical flux function. Uh, calculation of numerical flux function uh, is the most important thing for uh, this exercise uh, of high resolution methods. We know that uh, flux functions are calculated at the interface only or that means east face x e and x w for the waste phase. So, average value uh, we can calculate uh, considering the time interval t uh, to t plus delta t that is t n to t n plus 1. Uh, similarly, for waste phase also we can calculate the same thing. Now, approximation is important in this case. So, uh, let us consider uh, the situation where we have a greater than 0 that means a is positive and phi the average value uh, of the flux uh, at the face uh, or east face we can represent like this as per our definition. Now, we already know that a phi or f phi equals to a phi. Now, let us use uh, our tilde values which is the constructed value. Now, if we replace this phi tilde with our approximation that means uh, for this one we can get uh, our phi tilde for phi x e a t minus uh, t n. That means, we have any arbitrary time level t which is in between t n plus 1 and t n we are considering this. So, obviously, if we are considering the future time level value, uh, future time level value, uh, we should consider this variation within uh, T n 2, uh, uh, T n plus 1. Now, at x e T we have some value. So, obviously, we should consider del t that means, if this is x e this coordinate should be x e minus a delta t in this case delta t is t minus t n. So, we can replace this and we can calculate this uh, derivative. So, in this particular case, uh, we can replace our linear approximation for this one. So, obviously, this is x e minus a delta t or in this case delta t is t minus t n minus x p. So, this is general x in this case x minus x p and phi p n. Now, if we simplify this 
uh, from the first term we are getting a phi uh, p n and from the second term we are getting this second part which is uh, in, in this case obviously delta t means that we are taking variation uh, between t n plus 1 and t n. So, this phi p uh, or, or sig sigma p n uh, this is this term is important here. Similarly, uh, if we calculate uh, the numerical flux function for the waste phase uh, again for a greater than 0 or positive case, uh, we will have again t level and this is t uh, t n level. So, obviously, in this case if this is x w, uh, we can calculate uh, this one based on x w minus a into t minus t n and this term have replaced here and in this case uh, approximation is in terms of west cell value. In previous case uh, we have uh, seen that uh, our calculations are based on p cell only because variation we have considered within cell and flow of information from that cell to this phase. But in case of waste phase, the flow of information is from waste cell. So, we are considering phi w n sigma w n these two values. So, obviously, piecewise approximation should be in terms of x w which is the cell centered value of the w cell. Now, uh, from the first term uh, we can get this approximation directly and from the second term we can get this a by 2 uh, sigma w and a uh, delta x minus a delta t. Uh, obviously, delta t means uh, the change in time level from t n to t n plus 1. Now, uh, let us consider uh, our original finite volume equation. Uh, if you want to calculate phi p n plus 1, we need information about phi p n del t by del x and these two are numerical flux functions. So, numerical flux functions we have calculated in terms of phi p and phi w. Now, we can replace this in this particular expression. Now, you can see that for east phase we have phi p sigma p and for west phase we have sigma w uh, phi w and sigma w. Now, if you re rearrange this one, uh, we can write it like this. So, this is our original uh, expression where uh, we have directly uh, replaced this a phi p value minus a phi w n value and this term is extra, this term is extra in this case. Now, we need to uh, interpret uh, this particular term uh, physically. Uh, next thing is if we consider uh, a less than 0, 
in case of a less than 0 that means again this is east phase this is west phase and this is t level this is t n. So, obviously the flow of information for this particular level is from east cell. So, we are considering phi e sigma e in this case this is east cell this is p cell this is w cell. So, flow of information is from east cell. So, we have calculated uh, all the values in terms of uh, phi e and sigma e. Now, finally, we can get the uh, value of the integration. Similarly, for waste phase, now for waste phase again this is T, this is T n. So, information will be traveling uh, from our uh, P cell to x w. So, we can replace this phi p sigma p and x p in this case. Now, this is our final form of the numerical flux. Now, we can write a similar expression for a less than 0 by putting uh, this integral values. Now, in this case we can see that phi p n phi where n plus 1 equals to phi p n and uh, we have phi e and phi p combination in case of a greater than 0 uh, we have phi p and phi w combination. In this case uh, we have in natural terms this is our original expression and this is extra 1. So, in this case uh, if we summarize uh, both the things. So, for east phase we have uh, a greater than 0 it should be represented in terms of phi p if a less than 0 it should be represented in terms of phi e and sigma e. Uh, now, if we combine these two uh, we can easily uh, represent this one and in this case uh, we can use this uh, expression where we have a plus and a minus that we have uh, utilized in our previous lecture class. Uh, a plus a minus obviously for a greater than 0 uh, this is uh, our expression and uh, uh, we have just uh, written it in terms of phi p phi e phi p as sigma p and sigma e in general form. Similarly, uh, we can also write the, the numerical flux function in terms of this compact representation. Uh, so, what is this sigma p? Sigma p is nothing but uh, this is slope uh, as per uh, Godunov zero slope. That means, if we use sigma p n equals to 0, then we will get our Godunov scheme that is the basic one. Now, for higher order or higher resolution method, we need to use 
different slope values. If we uh, use this centered slope, that means uh, in this case of uh, the sigma p is dependent on phi e and phi w value uh, divi and divided by 2 delta x that means the distance between them. So, uh, if we use this, this this is called as from slope. Next one is upwind uh, for upwind uh, depending on the direction uh, we change the slope phi p minus phi w and this is divided by delta x. So, we are uh, considering the adjacent cell values in this case and downwind this is phi e minus phi p uh, divided by delta x. Uh, this is called as Lax-Wendroff scheme. Now, the choice of slope may create some problem uh, or oscillation within uh, the method. So, uh, this case we can see that uh, the sigma p physically uh, it approximates the derivative of uh, phi comma x that means uh, del phi by del x for over the p h cell if you are considering sigma p n. Now, we need to uh, see what can be done for this particular slope. Uh, is there any limit for this slope? Uh, we can check the total variation. Total variation of a function can be defined uh, as summation over all i and this is phi i minus phi i minus 1 that means previous cell value. Now, total variation diminishing uh, schemes uh, are such that if you have total variation for n, th, n plus 1 level should be less than equal to total variation in phi uh, or nth level. That means, T v total variation for n plus 1 level this is less than equal to total variation at our nth level. Now, uh, monotonicity uh, preserving scheme uh, or preserving method if phi i n is greater than phi i plus 1 n then uh, phi i n plus 1 this should be uh, satisfied. This is called as monotonicity uh, preserving method. Now, TVD is monotonicity preserving method. Now, slope limiters are required for high resolution method to check the oscillation. So, first order upwind sigma p equals to 0 that is our Godunov method. Min mod slope, uh, in min mod slope uh, we generally use uh, again the first order derivative of the function uh, from both the sides and we use this mean mod function. Interestingly, if we have alpha and beta in mean mod function, this is equal to alpha if mod alpha is less than mod beta and alpha beta greater than 0 and equals to beta if mod beta is less than mod alpha and alpha beta greater than 0 and equals to 0 if alpha beta uh, less than equals to 0. Uh, another slope limiter 
is a super B uh, limiter where sigma P1 uh, is mean mod. Uh, you can see that in this case uh, only uh, the derivative value and twice uh, 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 from the west side and second one is twice on the east side and this is single. So, uh, this is a uh, max mod function. Uh, we have flux limiter and what is this flux limiter? Uh, in our previous case, we have seen that uh, positive values and negative values uh, can be represented like this and slope related terms are these two terms. Now, in this particular case, uh, if we write this with first two terms directly and we approximate the second term that means we are using some kind of limit for the slope but in this case uh, we are considering sigma e uh, this is phi e minus phi p and this psi function is used now we need to define different forms of this psi uh, for flux limiters. In this case, this theta E n, uh, this is defined as phi p minus phi w divided by phi E uh, minus phi p for a greater than 0 and this is phi E minus phi E e. E e means east east. If we have central cell is P, this is E, this is W and extreme left will have W W and extreme right will have uh, our will have our east east cell this is actually east is cell value and this is for a less than 0. Now, if we consider the west phase again uh, we can approximate uh, the flux for the west phase. Uh, with this uh, theta and in this case we are utilizing this w w that means west west uh, cell value or extreme west cell value. Now, uh, what can be this uh, flux limiter for a point scheme we have psi theta equals to 0 these are linear models uh, lex wendorf we have psi theta equals to 1 uh, beam warming this is psi theta equals to theta and from slope uh, theta uh, psi theta equals to half 1 plus theta uh, in this case uh, uh, these are the different slopes uh, with variation of theta what is the change in psi theta we can see from this particular diagram. Now, another kind of slope uh, flux limiter can be there uh, which are high resolution uh, limiter or nonlinear limiters. Uh, we can have uh, uh, other methods, but 
we have min mod min mod of 1 theta then we have maximum of uh, this is our super b this is psi theta again uh, written in terms of uh, theta thing and this is uh, uh, mc uh, this is psi theta again max 0 uh, minimum 1 plus theta by 2 and 2 and theta this is the minimum of that we can utilize uh, with this uh, slope limiter and flux limiter uh, we can get different kind of approximation for numerical flux and we can utilize these approximations for our uh, a cell centered value calculation for future time level. So, another one is a van lead uh, this one thank you.